What happened? You are live and recording now. Okay, everyone. This is Lindsay Wood, the tiny home lady. I know there's another event that's just ending, coming on in. Awesome, awesome to be here. Yes, woohoo. All right, so just starting with Go Tiny. That's right, fully branding myself. I love it, I love it. Um, let me just figure out how to do the comments. There we go, cool. So you guys can all hear me. And at any point, if the sound or screen doesn't work, go out and come back in. I love the Run the World platform. I'm here in my hotel room in Costa Mesa. Here, let me get my backdrop a little more sexy, right? Wish I was in my tiny home. Um, we'll show you pictures about that. Um, but awesome, awesome. So what are the big takeaways? What are the things you've been learning? about going tiny? What did you just learn? What is something that you're really excited about while being here in this community of awesome, like-minded people? That would be my big, 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 big takeaway from just showing up, having done pretty much these since the beginning. Incredible networking. I love it. Loretta. Hi, Loretta. My fellow tiny home owner and liver. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Ivan. How's it going? I love it. Yay. Yeah. It's keep, keep, keep it flowing, everyone. Where's everyone coming from? Because I love that this community is a global, literally a global connection. We got Virginia in the house. I'm going to take some water. I'm excited. We've got Toronto, Ontario in the house. Whidbey Island, Waterloo, Ontario, New Jersey, uh, New Hampshire, New Hampshire again. Southern California. Yep, that's right. That's where I'm at right now, Costa Mesa. So when people ask me, where do you live? I'm like, the way I answer that is I am a, life, a mobile lifestyle. I live mostly in Northern California, also in Southern, but I'm pretty much like the Western states. And I've got a whole bunch of things going on. What's up, Jason? Oh my God. Hey, Pat. Yay, 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 yay. The sessions have been phenomenal. This conference Solid presenters with helpful tips and information. I hope everyone's getting something. And what's awesome, as part of your pass, you get the replays. So make it a commitment of yours. Like something that you may have lost, you know, because you had to go do something or you weren't, you had to sleep in a little longer or whatever. Go back and make sure to watch that. All right. Put that in your schedule right now. Set an alarm right? We've all got the memory devices. You know, they're not, this is not the memory device. This and our calendars are the memory device. Okay. Hello from Mexico. Awesome. Awesome. What's up, Renee, my girl in tiny fest land. Okay. We're going to get started because I talk fast, but I also take breaks and I want to do questions and answers. One thing with this format, uh, with this run the world, we'll see, because once I start sharing, I can't see the comments which I love, but right? I, when I'm on stage, I'm like interactive, hands raising, you name it, I'm all about it. So I'll have to adjust, but you know what? Welcome to tiny home life, right? <laughs> Adjustment may be necessary. Okay, so we are going to share screen, make sure everything's cleaned up, you know? It's like going to the house, gotta make sure before you invite everyone in, you're on the right page, okay. Let's leave, share screen, um, record this computer screen. That's weird. Okay, here we go. Oh no, system settings. Okay, so that's okay. We're okay. We're just gonna go and figure, so there we go. It was not clicked. So tell me a little bit more about what you guys are looking for for going tiny. I wanna hear from people like, are they in the process of dreaming of going tiny or are you already living tiny? So already living tiny or dreaming would be the comment you have to make. Dreaming already. All right. We got the dreamers out there. Dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. So what would be the biggest thing that you are looking for to go tiny? Like,
Okay. So sorry, everyone. That was a little goof on my part. Hit the wrong button. These things can happen. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So back to pick right up where we left. What were some of the challenges that, you know, you'd be looking at for, we're going tiny trouble with finances, need the money to buy a fab, find in the way to finance a tiny, and then put land on it. Okay. Near the ocean lakefront is cool. Real reason can live with smaller space and bills have a lot more mobility with the tiny home on wheels. Awesome. So tell me a challenge. Like, what are the things you're like, I've got so much figured out, but I need to know X, Y, and Z. Affordability, customizing, being the budget. Yeah, parking and finances. No surprise, right? I have been doing this for four years now. But our own journey of going tiny was quite, quite a twisty road. Um, if you, anyone had caught me, uh, anyone were here when I did the top 10 tips for hiring a builder? Anyone? Because I love this community. You guys come back. Yes. Okay. And for those that aren't familiar with me, um, our journey was sort of interesting. We went in 2017, my husband and I decided to go tiny because we were looking around at the prices in Marin County, California very expensive, you know, entry level home, million bucks. And we really tried, we thought, okay, let, let's, let's see what we can do. Well, in the end, um, it was just too expensive. And we decided to go tiny because it was going to give us more options. We also wanted to travel. So no surprise, here we are. Okay. Now we're silent. We're, we're cooking here. Okay. So can you see my screen? I know I'm kind of going back when I do this, it goes into like the zoom. Okay, cool. Okay, you can hear me. I'm going to hit present. This better work. These present buttons in Canva has not been... There we go. Yay. Okay. Um, Jason, would you guys mind just texting me and saying you guys can see everything and you can hear me well? Because I cannot see the comments. I will come in and out of that. But I kind of tend to go on a roll. Okay. I'm assuming you are until I see a text that says you're not. Good. Thank you. Okay. So this is the three steps to go tiny. When I started this presentation, it was like the 10 steps to going tiny, a little bit ridiculous. It's come down to three. I know, just three. Amazing. Before we go any further, big shout out and thank you to Jason and Zach behind the screen. I see you there drinking the coffee, rocking it on your final Sunday, right? I'm here to bring the energy and the juice. And if we were all in the same room, when I say go, you say tiny, go go. When I say tiny, you say now, tiny, tiny. Let's go tiny, everyone. The energy that it, you know, imagine we're all together. We are all together. We're just all in different places around the planet. We are all together here looking at someone's invention of a really cool conference that couldn't have come at a better time. They entered this online global tiny house conference at a time when COVID had just happened. They just jumped online and oh my goodness, so many people here. I don't know how many people have been like signed up for this one or what the results are different, but I, I know it's more. Okay. And I know it's global early days when we were doing this, like the first one or two was like people from the U S and then it grew exponentially to people all over the world. And that is a big indication of what actually, let me jump ahead. I'm going to tell my story in a second. That is a huge indication, sorry. Sometimes we change things. This is why I'm changing. Why do people want to go tiny? Now these are very US based, so apologies for anyone all over the world, but I have a feeling that it's not that different. That the prices of homes and the income, there's the blue line, prices of homes have gone up. Look at 1964, really close. So to buy a home and to have an income, it was totally cool. And then what happened? It just started going and going and going. Okay. And when, and, and so no surprise, we are in a massive demand. We don't have enough housing being built. Um, the housing that is being built is more expensive versus the incomes that have not kept up with the prices, right? So we're going to have big issues when we have that. The other big issue, the average number of people per household. 1950s, four people per 1,000 square feet. 2022, two people per 2,000 square feet. Like, what's happening here? We have less 
people are, we had more people in a smaller square foot than now. So sorry, there's um, a person at the door. I'll be right back. So sorry about that. Okay, so 30% of household is single. Over 50% is one to two people. And with all of that that's going on, with the median income and all of that, we are in a crisis globally. And if I could see your comments, I'd be like, yep, yep. Tell me for the people that are not in the U.S., are you also seeing the same kind of challenge with housing prices and wages not keeping up and all of that? Okay, so I'm going to go back a bit. So back to my story. This is our tiny home, 33 feet. Eric, come on in, poke your head in, because it, did, it didn't happen without him. This is my husband, Eric, and we're a team, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the way we've teamed up and all that as he packs up our gear, because we have to check out in an hour. Our gear. <laughs> packing our gear is a common theme. Yes, packing our gear is a common theme because we have a mobile lifestyle. And it all started in 2017. Thank you, love. Okay. It all started in 2017 with this tiny home. And when we picked up our tiny home from our builder, it was in a rescue mission because our builder went out of business in the middle of the build. And I do a whole presentation on this in my Go Tiny Academy, 10 Tips to Going Tiny. Those of you that, that saw it a few years ago um, here, it was quite a doozy, you know, to, to like bright eye, bushy tailed, I'm all excited. And then now we go from custom built tiny home to surprise DIY. So with that, we did it. Eight months later, we're back on the road. We're traveling around to different, you know, events and festivals. The first one, Colorado Tiny House Festival, kind of dear to my heart in Brighton, Colorado, uh, coming up very soon. We're going to be there again. Uh, you know, COVID, wow, woo, took all of us on a big journey. I'm so grateful again for this global house conference because without it, how do we stay connected, right? But now the world's opening up. I know there's still some lockdowns and you name it, right? It's just sort of the new normal of how we ebb and flow. But it has been so great. I've been to Tiny Fest and uh, the Home and Garden Show in Fresno, and then the San Diego Home and Garden Show in the last two and a half months. This home is now being placed in Escondido and is going to be rented as an Airbnb. I'm doing a partnership on that. Be on the lookout for more of education on how to set up a tiny home that you may own in someone else's property for a short-term rental, because there's a lot of pieces involved in that. All right, so that's our story. Um, we're shifting gears. Our, our thing is always evolving, but I couldn't be doing this without the future in mind, right? And the future in mind is buying a Wilderwise because we are a mobile lifestyle. This home, 20,000 pounds, burned through a transmission. It's just heavy, okay? It's just too heavy to drive all around. It's really more suited for landing. How many of you want to like travel with your home like an RV, like a recreational vehicle? Just write travel in the comment. How many of you want to like land your home? You want your home to be portable, but you really want to land it. Okay. Because most people, 99% of people want to just get a home, have it built by in a factory and then land it. Okay. So with the boards that I serve on, the Wilderwise and the Tiny Home Industry Association, super important for me to... Um, you know, look to the future. And Wilderwise was definitely one of those organizations I was so excited about. Anyone seen the Wilderwise? Anyone excited about the Wilderwise? The roof comes up in this picture. It's actually up, up position. It goes to 17 feet, very lightweight. So that what they figured out, fully loaded, solar panels, tanks, water, you name it, about 11,000 pounds. That is half of our tiny home right now. And we just towed another tiny home in and out of San Diego Home and Garden Show, and that was about 15,000 pounds. It is noticeably different when you tow a really heavy home versus a lighter weight home. And what does that do on fuel prices, right? It just helps considerably. And when you're pulling a few thousand miles around the country per year, you know, you're going to have those expenses. And then shifting gears to the Tiny Home Industry Association, absolutely love. Who's a member of Thea? Let me know who's a member of Thea because really wanting to promote the legalization of tiny homes. We've got to be more and more places um, available to be legal for tiny homes. Hold on one second. I'm going to tell my husband to um, be a little bit quieter. 
Eric, can you go in the, can you quiet? Thank you. Thank you. I organized everything, right? But sometimes this is part of um, living mobily is that we want to live in a, in a home where one person can be downstairs and the other person can be upstairs. Because what if I'm on Zoom? I am not a light talker. <laughs> I'm not a quiet mouse. Okay, so the Tiny Home Industry Association doing the advocacy kind of work um, is so critical for growing. And we have got amazing advancements. L recently, I'm going to kind of go backwards. Oakland and Portland. Give a shout out. Anyone from Oakland and Portland? They allow tiny homes on wheels in backyards of single family homes, as well as recreational vehicles. That is like, boom, when they made that kind of ordinance, game changer. And so many more from San Diego to LA, state of Maine, um, pockets around the country that are, are happening in the world of legalization is just really phenomenal. So become a member of the Tiny Home Industry Association. Someone can drop their link in the chat. That'd be really great on tinyhomeindustryassociation.org. Super, super important. Okay, so it's a team effort. My husband and I took the last four years of our experience of going tiny. I did a rebrand, came from Experience Tiny Homes to the Tiny Home Lady, because I kept saying that's who I am. And I guide people on going tiny. I take you and help you save thousands of hours of research, save you costly mistakes like we did. We spent over $50,000 in exp expensive mistakes from our builder and fixing them, including $5,400 of replacing our tires and our axles. It's like I said, I do a whole top 10 tips hiring the builder. That's not this presentation because I love what I'm doing now. My husband is also setting about creating tiny freedom webinars, really helping people build wealth, protect assets, and leave legacies. And I'll talk a teeny bit more about that later. So it's a husband and wife team. We talked about the wine going tiny. Just another reminder, right? We've gone bigger <laughs> from the house size and smaller in terms of the number of people. So what is that per square foot? We have to house, heat, and cool more square footage per person. It's, you know, kind of inverse from what our planet really needs. So from the dream that people hold, how many of you, I already know a lot of people dreamers out there. There's this dream. It's like these pockets and, you know, maybe you have an idea of where you're going to park it. Maybe you have an idea of how you're going to fund it. Maybe you have an idea of like what color your walls are and the type of faucet you have. However, it might not all be formed. For those that really know about design, they may not know where to park it. For those that know how to fund it, they don't know where, what type of size and, you know, is it foundation or is it wheels? Those are so many pieces. And we've got to go from dream down into this funnel of reality. And that takes decision making all the way through. And I'm here to help you guide you on that process because if we stay up here, right, we're still in the dream. But if we really, really want to make our dream happen, we might need some guidance along the way because this is an industry. It takes, it's a process. Um, it's not an industry that's a process. It's the, it's the tiny home is a process because of land and financing. Those are the first two majors. And before I get into the three steps, I just want to start with the biggest one. Tiny home, the words, is a marketing term. Okay, let me say that again. Tiny home is a marketing term. If you were to walk into the 19,000 building apartments, say, I'd like a tiny home now. Here's my, you know, I have an application for a tiny home. They don't know those words, okay? You could have a van and call it a tiny home. You could be in a school bus and call it a tiny home. You could be in a tiny home that we're seeing on YouTube and all those with, you know, cute gable roofs and all that is a tiny home. But <laughs> what's allowed, what's permitted and all that, it doesn't have a name of a tiny home. It's got different names. And today I'm going to highlight you on, I'm going to get, kind of touch the surface on the four types of tiny homes. And that all relates to the three steps to going tiny, because what's the very bottom one? Tiny home. But the first two are usually where people get hung up the most, right? How many of you in the comments? I'm going to jump out right now and um, go back to the comments. Let me know if finance is one of your biggest ones. Just type finance in the comments because I want to see how many people finance, right? Whether that's, I don't know the budget. I don't know where the money's going to come from. I'm not sure who to get the money from. I don't know how much the thing's going to cost. Whatever involves a dollar sign, okay? Because of material costs. Thank you, Rory. Absolutely. I know material costs. Ah. 
it's affected things big time. Just look at gas prices, right? That, you know, if you're going to order something and it has to arrive on a truck or a plane or a boat, it's got fuel involved. Okay, how about land? Anyone with land? Like you've got the other ones kind of dialed in, but what about land? Where are you going to park it? Just type in land. Awesome. Yes, I'm seeing a So um, just saying goodbye are my dear, dear friends and uh, my husband. And um, it's been awesome to be connecting with them about building wealth here. So yes, land, sister's acreage. Okay, how many of you have family land? Don't, okay, family land, you know where. How about anyone going to like, an, you know you're going to be going like to RV parks because you're not quite sure where you're going to land, but you're okay to start somewhere. Maybe you've got a dream, dream land, but you're willing to start somewhere different. That's me kind of guiding people. Yep, RV parks, RV park for now. And an RV park can also be transformed into tiny home village. There's a lot of RV parks that are getting familiar with like, oh, tiny homes. Wow, everyone's calling me about tiny homes. And people want to bring their tiny home. Looking for an intentional community. I love that. Super shout out for... Um, Search Tiny House Villages, our dear friend Jill Canto, rock star on figuring out intentional communities, all the documents, all the things. So go and find Search Tiny House Villages. Thank you, Loretta. Thank you. You are a rock star. Okay, so we're going to go back in because I'm sharing my screen. I know it's kind of like crazy Zoom land there. Okay, present. Awesome. I love it. I love it. So many people letting me know that, yeah, finance and land. No surprise. I'm like, I love talking about tiny homes. I mean, my first Go Tiny Academy for a year ago, one year ago, the entire thing was focused on design. I spent four out of 10 weeks. It was a live version. I'm no longer doing live. I'm maybe doing, you know, course version. Four weeks out of 10 were focused on design alone. Guess, guess what was happening a year ago? People were customizing their tiny homes. It was before COVID. I shouldn't say a year ago. Sorry, two years ago. Anyway, I mean, it's so funny. Do you feel like you ever like, where did a year go? Anyway, and nowadays at one tiny home festival that we were just at in Del Mar, one builder was a custom builder. That was our buddy Lou from Tiny Mountain Houses. So if you want, you know, you are like, I want to play with where my bathroom is and all those other things, then you go talk to Lou, okay? Because all the builders that I know are heading towards models. Why are they heading towards models? Because it's more efficient. And because after building, you know, 100 tiny homes, you're like, gee, you're going to put the bathroom here or here or here. So if they can create a model that could work for you and then you customize, maybe move a window. Moving windows and doors are the easy part. Moving plumbing and electrical, not so easy, especially as we get further and further into certifications and standards for which tiny homes are built to. And that's probably the most exciting part that, I could have never talked about this four years ago. Didn't understand it. But now, from a, the help of many people in this industry, I can help guide you into understanding a little bit more about the four types. Okay. So this just kind of gives you the bigger scope of where we're going. Financial, land, tiny home. It's like a big checklist. There's some little parts of checklists underneath each one of these. And we're about to dive in. Okay. So financial. This is sort of think of your starting point of your like your smaller checklist. If you're not sure what how much your home will cost, you need to know what type of tiny home you're going to get. OK, because a lot of people are in a situation like, well, I don't know what the you know, if I say what's your budget, some people say, well, what's it going to cost? So this is kind of like a chicken in the egg thing. Right. But you got to kind of start somewhere and you really need to figure out what type of tiny home. Hopefully I will enlighten you in the next four types of going tiny home to help you guide, but your land, just a little note, your land will greatly determine what type of tiny home. Your financial situation will also determine what type of tiny home. You're in Utah, you have no accessory dwelling unit ordinance in your jurisdiction. You wanna put something on land that you, now you have to buy raw land and you have a certain housing size requirement that bumps it over 400 square feet, you're looking at a HUD. Okay, I know that was a big jump, but if we're like, what was she saying? We'll dive into that, okay? But that, one example 
highlights a little bit about what's going on for a lot of people, like kind of in a, they're in like a pinball machine in our own brains, right? And all we really want to focus on is our adorable counter and our faucet and our, <laughs> right? Those cool things and living in the home, not all this other stuff, but got to go through this other stuff, right? Think of it as gateway to your dream. So do you need financing to make your dream happen? What type of tiny home do you want? Where is it going to go that is going to greatly impact? There's property finance. Oh, no, what, what do I want to say? Personal financing, consumer loan, signature loan, cons, uh, uh, sorry, personal loan. Usually those are the three that are very similar. They're more expensive, higher interest rates, usually shorter term to pay back. I, at one point, was telling everyone, go run off to your credit unions. Well, I walked into a local credit union. I'm like, hi, do you have any RV loans? No. Okay, great. Maybe they're just not the right. There's other credit unions that have RV loans. Then I'm like, okay, let's just say I wanted a personal loan. How much would you guys provide? $20,000. <laughs> so I'm not going to build much with that in this economy. Um, it was a seven-year payback. And the interest rate was like 15%. I'm like, thank you. Bye-bye. Right? People are so used to seeing mortgage loans that like in the, well, it's going up a little bit, but still not over five. And so we get that number in our head and we hear 15, you go running unless that's really all you can do. Okay. So really needing to know what kind of home you're going to get, where the land is, is going to weave back into this financial conversation. Land, right? Do you want to legally park a tiny home? That is probably the biggest question you need to ask yourself. If your answer is, you know, yes, for sure, then you're going to go down a certain rabbit hole. If your answer is, I don't care, I don't, you know, no. There's people I definitely know, they're like, nope, under the radar, we're totally fine. We know our neighbors, everything's great. If you don't know, the, if you're just buying the land or you don't even own the land yet, and you, that is probably a not sure, because rarely do I find people wanting to invest in property with a giant unknown, right? Especially if the tiny home on wheel or on foundation. So how many of you want to do a foundation or on wheel? I have to see this. Foundation or wheels, which one? Wheels, 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 on wheels. Oh, got one foundation. Wheels, wheels. Okay, lots of wheels, portable, cool. Wheels and take them off. Oh, this is my favorite one. I've never heard this. Important to know, if you want to take off your wheels, is that for legalization? Just want to ask um, Vicki. Do you mind, Vicki, if we have a little mini dialogue here? So, okay, wheels to avoid property tax. Susan did that same as well. Vicki or Susan, like, do you still want to get it legally parked? Yes, and whatever it takes. Okay, <laughs> awesome. I will tell you right now. If you're in an area, a jurisdiction, that's city or county, states are not jurisdictions, city or county, or other provinces or other things. I'm sorry, I'm talking in very U.S. language. Um, if you want to legalize it and they don't allow wheels in your area yet, then you need to go sign up for Thea and learn about how to advocate in your area and become and legalize that. If you don't want to do all that, you might have to go and do a foundation-based. However, everything I talk about is made in a factory. Nothing is made from scratch on land. But if you wanted to do that, then this is not your crew. This, you know, that's plenty of other places doing that. So everything's going to arrive on wheels, but what stays or how it lands on the land. Yes, my tiny home can park. Wheels can come off. Axles can even come off. You have to unweld them. Not something I would do to then want to drive again. But that does not mean that the home that I built is developed to a standard that is going to be allowed by that jurisdiction. Does that make sense? Just because I take the wheels off, that's easy. It's whether or not you're allowing, getting allowed, okay? There's some finesse in this one and I don't have a ton of time because I got to cover a lot, but here we go. Okay, so hopefully that made sense, you know, um, because I'm zooming in and out of questions and all that and I really hope Run the World can fix this because if I could see the comments right now, amazing. So. I know they're working on, these guys are a great platform. They're very responsive, but that would be the part. Especially when we share screens with other things like Canva, PowerPoint, name the list. So then the last one, let's see, you know, is what you want to do allowed. I want to buy a land and place a tiny home. 
then we get into this whole thing like, look, I know your dream is this, you know, I hate to be the reality checker, but you might need to go with a home on foundation to meet the dream. And that's to have a minimum house size. And I did, I've had a number of conversations like, yeah, what I can afford is 600 square feet, but what they're requiring is a thousand. How dare they? Well, welcome to zoning in America, right? Um, or, or whatever you call it in different countries, you know, whatever requirements there are, whatever rules are placed on land. You know, it, think of a long time ago when people just rode out in their covered wagons and their horses and they put a stake in the ground. We are far from that, unless you're in Texas, which is a little more, you know, kind of, it's the only state in the nation that allows you to put unpermitted or sorry, unrestricted. I shouldn't say only state, but it's the only state in the nation where the counties are literally designed for unrestricted property. There's a lot of places in the South that if you really want to do what you want to do, you might consider moving, right? Because those are all things. And it's just a matter of like how strong your dream is. Is that enough to make, you know, have you move other places? Okay, so I'll leave it with that. That's the land. Now we get into the tiny home. Four types of tiny homes gets you on the path to affordable housing and financial freedom. Why do we put in financial freedom? It's the number one reason why people have chosen to go tiny. And I know that because my dear friend Renee put out a post in one of the Facebook groups and said, fill in the blank. I want to go tiny because I think at the last time we checked that one post was like 800 responses. And I went in, I did not look at all 800. That would be an amazing project. But I went in and looked at like 100. And from that, did a little little statistics analysis because I have my cute little MBA that I'm still paying off. <laughs> and I figured out out of what everyone said, financial freedom, simplicity, travel, portability, sustainability. Okay. There's others in there, of course, on um, family, generational, living in community. There was other things there, but the number one by far financial freedom. And I check with everyone here. Is that true for you? Just say yes in the comments financial, if like saving money from rent, mortgage, being able to put more in your bank account, retirement, whatever it may be. Yes, 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 yes. Totally. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. No surprise, right? You saw the graph, you know, and if your income hasn't like done that, or if you have your housing, we're in a crisis and it's been going on for a long time. Okay. So Number one, boom, boom, movable tiny home as seen on YouTube and TV. Big shout out to my buddy, Zach Giffen. Thank you so much for Tiny House Nation. Tiny Luxury, Zach and Jason. Obviously, you guys were OG on the, the TV show showing beautiful homes, just like blowing our minds with amazing design. But it's not a standard yet. <laughs> we are borrowing from the next one, okay? Notice the wheels. I want to make it very pointed. This is a home on wheels. Park model. The park model, as in known as the American National Standards Institute, A119.5, shortened down to ANSI. If you guys hear that term, ANSI, 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 ANSI. That's what it means. It's a park model. There it is. It's on wheels. Seen in thousands of parks, mobile home parks, RV parks, you know, but mostly mobile home park, not RV, but some. Actually, I take it back. Yes, I've seen them a lot. Like oftentimes you'll be in an RV park and those are the units that are there is like the people that come and stay in there while maybe someone's bringing in a group of RVs and you know so on and so forth. However, notice the very bottom temporary living. This is the biggest challenge as to why this park model can't get you know um, approved in places all over the, the country because this temporary living situation is on there. And yet you and I looking at that home right there, two by four, two by six construction, there is nothing temporary about that, okay? That's got R19 in the walls. It's got, um, I forgot what the insulation is, the ceiling, but like regular house building, okay? Up to 400 square feet. Isn't that convenient? It happens to be the number that most people are really comfortable with. I love my dear friend, Jay. He started off smaller home. That was totally fine. But even he had kids and moved into a bigger home, Okay. People are really comfortable in that 300 to 400 square feet. We have seen that size just go crazy. But it started with Jay's vision. And let's go back to 
a cold winter in Iowa, living in an RV, pumping a bunch of heat into that RV and realizing, you know what? We could do this differently, but I want it portable. Hence the birth of the tiny home, okay? So one and two, wheels, 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 wheels. Not a standard. This is the standard that it's built to. Number three, foundation. See that? But everything's built in a factory. Everything's arriving on wheels. Now this one's a little bit of head like twister. Modular, IRC, prefab, factory built. Those are all the terms and I've checked with people again and again and again and again and again. Literally, we have like four things that mean the same thing. Yep. <laughs> Great. What could possibly be confused in this realm? So the number one thing you have to remember about any of these and what, however you hear it, prefab factory built IRC modular, built to a state building code. Here in California, it's the Title 24 Energy Efficiency is the, I think one of the highest um, energy efficiency standards because we have so many population, we need to keep our energy consumption low. You know why? Our political demands or our political willpower in our, in our state does not allow for more power plants to be built. There's no way that's gonna happen. So how do we keep increasing population? Yes, people are leaving, people are also coming. It's amazing weather. Plenty of people here living the crazy dream of paying a lot of money because of that weather. And so, and beauty and all that great stuff. So the energy efficiency has got to be in there. This is one of my biggest things. So look at this standard R38 in the ceiling. Let's go back to Jay's scenario. In the winter in an RV pumping it with heat. Does R38 help you greatly? Yeah. R19, you know, just so you know, the park model, this actually standard requires an R5 insulation in the wall. Shocker, anyone in um, like places where it gets cold or hot, you do not want R5. You're just going to be heating and cooling yourself. It's as if you had paper thin walls. That's why a lot of builders are like, oh my gosh, we'll never build this way. Most of them are coming from the building, home building industry. They'll never build an R5 wall. It's like a two by three or two by two. Can't remember which one, but it's tiny, not a two by four. Two by four are 11 or more allows you to have a thicker insulation, okay? So this just gets into our housing needs to build quality so that we don't end up pumping a bunch of energy. And what's happening with energy? Is it going up or is it going down, right? It's going up in terms of pricing. So we want to park the home. It's going to land. What's going to be involved in just a little bit on the pricing? You're going to buy the home. You're going to have a transportation fee. You're going to have a setting fee. You're going to have a permit fee. If you're going to legally permit, you're going to legally permit a modular. You're not going to get around that. You're not going to DIY it because these guys build at their factory and it's built to an inspected standard at the state level. And instead of them having to come out to your property four times and checking everything, they're going to the factory. Done. So faster, faster build times there on your property, like matter of weeks versus months. Um, the other one finally is accessibility. You have to crane the thing in. Oh, the other one was permit. Sorry. So five things, tiny home, transportation. Sorry. It was like uh, setting the home and uh, we're going to be permits, utilities, and then also accessibility. If you have to crane something in or take down a fence or whatnot. Um, so those are all, this is your foundation base. Finally, HUD. Housing urban development is a national standard. Two doors. You can notice this one here, right there. No loft. Okay, you can go down to 320 square feet or more. Notice this one back here, 400 square, up to 400 square feet. This one goes down. So there's a little overlap. You could do a HUD. Looks very similar to a little tiny home. Look at that thing. If, you had, if this is skirted and had wheels on it, it's no different than this one, right? So what makes this a HUD? It's a national standard. A lot more option and a lot more builders are getting into HUD because of the issue with the wheels. It still arrives. I'm going to say this again and again. It's built in a factory. It arrives on wheels, but the wheels go away, especially in HUD and modular. No wheels. <laughs> okay. So hopefully this just really gives you an, a, a viewpoint into what's going on. Um, who's ready for a hot seat?
Okay, we don't have a lot of time. I'm gonna undo my thing. Hot seat is where we get, okay, stop sharing screen. Someone's gonna like click on their microphone if you're looking to go tiny. Um, if no one jumps on the microphone, I'm gonna pick someone. Uh, let's see, Stephanie, I love your village vision. Do you wanna come out on the mic? What you're gonna do is find the mic somewhere on your screen. For me, it's like right below the visual. We'll spend a couple minutes just finding out more about Stephanie or anyone else. They don't grab the mic first. First one to grab the mic. How about that? I charge $60 for this kind of thing. So think of it as your freebie. Well, we're not going to spend 15 minutes on it, but I oh, can't find Mike. Okay. Hmm. I don't know because I only have my screen. Oh, here we go. You got it. Boop, boop, boop. Here we go. All right, everyone, give a round of applause. You know, give the little claps. Big claps. Um, what's that other thing? The, like, happy dance. Okay, I know I asked her to come out, but it's not doing anything yet. <laughs> what's happening? Oh, here we okay, go. Can I turn the camera on? <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, whatever you want. I can hear you. Um, actually, I don't care. Hi, I'm Susan. Good yeah, job. I don't care. See, give her, give her a <laughs> Look at all these people giving you thumbs up because thank you for being back. That's bright. hilarious. Um, so basically we wanted to do a tiny home village. We had a property in escrow to do so. And then, and it had the proper zoning for an RV park and we thought we were all good to go. Um, come to find out the property was already at capacity for septic and the county would not let us add anything. And the county said that they don't allow because I thought, okay, fine, you don't want to put us into the septic because everything else was fine. The septic was at capacity. So I suggested the, you know, the 250, 300 gallon storage tanks that slide under the trailer. And they're like, oh yeah, we don't allow that in this county. So no matter what we said, it, it was a no. And so we no ended up problem. having to cancel the escrow. And, I've, and the sellers, we were so confident. We literally worked for an, a year and a half on this purchase. And we were so confident that the sellers were acting like the only problem was, oh, can you get enough financing? I had the money in my hand three times. And then um, come to find out, they knew the septic issue and didn't disclose it to us. So I was not a happy camper. And yeah. uh, so now I have three tiny homes that, because they let me already order the home. So I have three homes, tiny homes sitting on the property that now I need to move by the end of the month. And I'm trying to figure out where else I can do a tiny home. And I, my family's been in the, mobile home and RV park business for 30 Ooh. years. Okay. One second. So you still have the cash. You didn't lose anything. Yay for that. Right. Well, I lost some, a, a majority of the cash cause I had investors with me. I'm sorry. Er. Okay. So what's the big take? Million dollars you, worth. <laughs> you have a what? It was what? They, it, the purchase price was eight and a half million dollars. So yeah, I have a few hundred the thousand. That's about money? it. A few hundred thousand. That's about it. Okay. Bless her. Like you guys, this is massive to learn this right now for anyone, anyone here wanting to like do a village, put village in the comment and learn <laughs> from this amazing woman who's doing this. And, and I hope, okay. So now Susan's just shared her story. Anyone that wants to do this kind of thing, you need to team up because, okay. So I've I'm got, not to start with it. Okay, so I won't, I don't have time to show, but I will tell you right now, joining the Tiny Home Industry Association, have you already been a member? Oh, I'm on Thea, yes, I remember. Okay, have you been to our webinar series that talks about buying land without buying land and doing all that due diligence stuff? No, I literally just met them at the Tiny Fest in Del Mar a couple of weeks ago. Okay, okay, run, don't walk. I mean, literally, Dan is the land developer here, you guys, that have been doing multi-million dollar projects around the country. Right. And he literally breaks it down. And then one of the videos, unfortunately, yeah. Bush family lost $30,000. They were very bright eyed, bushy tail, very excited, but they didn't check um, a very important thing, which would be the neighbors and this, um, I forgot what it's called, not ordinance, um, CCNRs, right? And it's just some things that you, you get your skin in the game because you get your scars, right? And then you learn from those. And I'm so sorry that that happened. Um, so, where do you see going? So now you're still looking for another place? I actually got a text from someone this morning that may have some property nearby that we can do this with. Sorry for the whole jewelry camera, but I don't like cameras. Um, <laughs> and my, this is giving me this. And so, yeah, I mean, the thing is, is I had development experience. I, I have all this. I even got a general plan amendment years ago up in Northern California. 
So I oh. kind of, you know, I thought I, I was wow. doing one. But when people were ready, straight up and COVID had the county offices shut down. I couldn't get the kind of info I really wanted. Yeah. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. So, and you're not alone. You know, Zion, Zion, tiny home um, village, four years. Tiny tranquility, four years. And both of them had moments where like, we weren't sure it's going to make it. And in this scenario, I'm, you know, sorry to hear it didn't make it and you lost it because I have no doubt the reason why you want to do it is so you can provide housing for people. Exactly. So this is sometimes where those ordinances and zones, no matter what, the septic, the, you name it, the things that you want to do, the putting the, you, you were being creative and they were like, no, 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 no. Sometimes we have to go and change those rules to allow for the things. And it's just a matter of like, when you have to do that kind of level of work, then it takes a lot more time. Okay, everyone, give her a big round of applause. Thank you for coming out. Connect with her. If you want to be a part, it sounds like she knows what she's talking about and willing to do the work and also looking for investors. So thank you so much for sharing your story. I really appreciate it. Okay, so we're going to jump back in. Um, I might have enough time for another hot seat, but I want to just share with you a little bit about how I work with people and what's coming up next, because that is, you know, culmination of like four years of all this personal experience you know, with our builder going bust, with all of that happening um, to helping people and consulting with both consumers as, you know, people buying tiny homes as well as businesses. I have guided so many builders into different directions, even certifications, because what I've learned, I kind of tend to sage out, you know, like geek out on industries. I did that with lighting. I did that with biodiesel. This is my third song. This is where I'm parking my, myself for many years to come. You know, biodiesel kind of came and get, went because it was, uh, let's see, the tax subsidies got yanked away. LED lighting, the rebates went down. I finally found an industry, I'm like, well, housing will always be needed, okay? And if anything, we're just starting, right? This industry is only, let's say I met Jay in 2004, right? Do the math. It's not that old. And it doesn't, it, it also is not that old because there literally was, there was nothing legalized for tiny homes. They were totally something brand new. Now we've actually got some legs. We have some stuff happening in the state of California that is just going to blow people's socks away. And I just like, and I, I can't talk too much more about it, but it's coming. Okay. So, ta-da, coming up soon. Sign up to get notified for the Go Tiny Academy 2.0. Um, last year, 1.0. I mean, seriously, it was, uh, yeah, it was last year during COVID. I was teaching about how to customize your tiny home. That's just what was going on. Now, I'm not going to teach about customizing anything. I mean, you can, you'll get 1.0 as part of 2.0, but... Most people are not going to be buying custom tiny homes. You know, if anything, I think I didn't really focus too much on the home pricing, but you're anywhere from 200 to 500 plus a square foot. Okay. 200 if you're lucky. 300 is probably, 350 is probably more likely. Um, so go Tiny Academy 2.0. I'm just going to go, I'm still sharing my screen. So I'm going to go to the tiny home lady. Just to show you all, there we are, uh, the Lindsay and Eric team guiding you to go tiny and start your path to financial freedom. Um, I had some really fun time on the news channels recently. I do offer consulting calls. I no longer offer the 15-minute freebie. So if you had one, awesome. Uh, but I'm just going forward in the Tiny Freedom webinars. And the most important part, sorry, there we go, go Tiny Academy. So we're going to be breaking this up into these three steps of going tiny. But we're going to go on a deep dive. Each of these videos, how to finance, how to price, how to find parking, how to find how to park a home on land you own, the four types of tiny homes. I just scratched the surface today. What you need to know about insurance, the top 10 tips for hiring a builder, design elements of going tiny. I know a lot of people learned some great design elements from people in this conference. You know, really how to ready your life for going tiny. How to travel. I mean, there are some people out there with travel. Um, and then there's just going to be checklists and roadmaps for the journey ahead. I even do guided visualizations because some of this stuff can be like that pinball machine bouncing around. And sometimes we just need to ground ourselves so that we can still see seeing the vision. I will tell you one quick story about that. I had a woman that in the guided visualization, she realized she really wanted a bathtub. And before she went into that visualization, she was telling herself no, but she kept seeing that in the visualization. 
she finally came out and was like, you know what? I deserve a bathtub. So you never know where things that our body holds a lot more information than what we hold in our little brain here. And the logic over the heart, heart's going to win every day, but we don't really give it enough credit. So I'm just going to talk a little bit more about getting more body centered. I'm a dancer. I am super in my body. We had an 80s dance party here last night. I was really in my body. <laughs> okay. So we're in development, but just look at these happy people. Um, I'll show you, share with you. These four people were like consistent. I will take quality over quantity any day. Each one of these is in contract. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I really don't know about her. I don't think so. But I mean, for me, huge win for me that each one of these amazing people, eventually we're going to be having a party in their tiny home, celebrating them living tiny, where they found the parking, what was the journey, all of that. But it hasn't happened yet, but I am just like so tickled that it is happening. So um, where people go to find out more, they click here. You get to learn more about like what's your big takeaways, you know, simplify. And then when you get to one of these buttons clicking, I'm ready. You just go here to our sign up list. Join the tiny home fam. We're having a blast. We're having like so much fun, both online, in person. We're going to do a lot more in person stuff now that we can do in person stuff. Like I'm an extrovert. <laughs> COVID was not easy for me. For some people like, oh my God, I don't have to go anywhere. Yes, I did enjoy that to some degree. Okay. But I am looking forward to doing workshops like Fort Bragg, just so you know, a little tiny town in my area of Northern California, Mendocino County, just allowed tiny homes and backyards. First thing I thought about workshop, we're going to go do that in person. We're going to go bring the people together. You know, the festivals are great, but it's like big and crazy in two days. And there's not a lot of time to go deep, right? We want to go deep, tap into the root of the dream, right? Because I have a feeling it comes more grounded than it is up here in the clouds. But we got to like make the two. So click there, sign up to get notified. That's probably the best thing. Um, and then got to give a shout out for my husband doing the Tiny Freedom webinars. He is doing some great work. Here, let me go back to this. So you click on Tiny Freedom and we're all about tax saving strategies. We ourselves, you guys have been to debt consolidation, I've done bankruptcy, I've done, you know, like I'm a spender, he's an avoider. Then there's the other style, which is a hoarder, right? There's three styles of money types, spender, voider, hoarder. And the spender and avoider together have been really working on our stuff. And it's not always easy. It's not easy to share about. But our dream, the tiny home is a part of that. Home ownership, building wealth, retirement planning. I'm 52 years old, just figuring this out right now. I feel like, man, I know my 20-year-old self could have done a lot better, but I, I have to make up because my 80-year-old self needs to be taken care of. We don't know how long we're going to live. We're living longer. We, the biggest fear, outliving our money. Okay, so leaving a legacy. And so we've taken these building wealth, build a financial agency, tiny home investment club webinars and put them together. So go ahead, click on there and register for them because, you know, we really want to make sure the 99% of us that are, are choosing to go tiny because of financial freedom, really attain financial freedom. And it's not just with the house, right? It's about investing. It's about diversification. All of those things go into it. Like Susan was doing with a tiny home village. Okay and attracting investors. So all of those really play a role. And I'm just gonna leave you with the like QR code. And we got like five minutes for, um, I'll copy this tiny young lady. I'll undo my screen and we've got some time for Q and A. So anyone wanna add something that, if you did something in the comments a while back and it was a question, put it in now because I didn't see it because I'm jumping around. And the Run the World platform does not allow me to see the comments while I'm presenting. So anyone, I feel your pain. Thank you for willing to share your story. Some county jurisdictions, even progressive ones like where I live are truly hung up on the septic issue. Yeah. I decided to go with composting toilet options. Awesome. I will tell you though, composting toilet, you guys, compost, come on. It takes one year for a human waste to compost. That does not mean it's going to be sitting in that little separate or the nature's head because what's happening? You're filling it up. We lived this way for two years. We had to take it out and dump it. Where do you dump it? So rarely are jurisdictions like, yeah, come on with your compost toilet, unless you're in Oregon. 
those guys rock because they allow it. So that's my little comment on composting toilets. You have to really, if you're doing the permit thing, you know, under the radar, I live more under the radar than I lived legal and on, on radar. Okay. I just parked my home spending $5,000 in the backyard of Escondido unsure <laughs> if it's going to be able to be stayed there because if one person complains, it's a complaint driven scenario. That home has to go, but I'm willing to take the, the risk. Yeah. Oregon go Renee. Oregon also allows gray water usage. That's right. Very inexpensive and easy to complete permit. Maybe they don't allow composting, but they allow gray water. That's a very significant difference. Okay. If you're on farm, go look up YouTube, like human ore piles, tons of that. I do not live in a wilderness now. They're just finished the prototype and they're going into their first 10 build. So that was probably going to be something we're going to do. I will tell you, and we're not a partnership right now. And the events that we're going to, like eight of them this year, Colorado, who's going to Colorado, who's going to Tiny Fest in Pleasanton, who's going to Tiny Fest in Phoenix, um, Great American Tiny House Show in LA and all over the country. There's so many amazing events to go to. Uh, yes, Renee's going to Tiny Fest. So check out Tiny Fest. Renee, drop that in the, in the chat, your link. Um, we are looking for big sponsors to sponsor this event. It is time. We've got enough zoning and ordinances. We've got the people organizing the festivals. We've got plenty of builders out there. We've got people buying tiny homes. We need the big guns, the money to really grow this industry because the more money and exposure we have, the more we can influence more elected officials. It's just how it works. Okay. I love it. All right. Any other questions? I'm going to scroll back um, as I have like two minutes. Did I cover everything? Um, who's interested in Go Tiny Academy? I'm just curious. I'm like, I hope I'm building it for people. It literally will be a DIY course that you sign up. It's probably going to be in the 200 to 300, maybe for the early stirs, there'll be less obviously deals uh, than in the future, but awesome. Me, I'm telling you, I've taken my entire brain, all I've learned from myself, my own experience, all these other people being on boards, you name it. And we're going to just plug it in. Um, there's still other people that need to, you know, if you need someone to help you with permitting and ordinances, and I mean, not, not ordinances, permitting for your property, there's going to be pros involved in this course that I'm working on to be involved. Um, you're still going to have to pay for their fees. Basically, I, look, I told someone the other day, I'm like, you might pay for me for 250 bucks to do one hour. And you might also do the Go Tiny Academy. Let's just say that's $550. Let's just say you do another hour with me, but your entire home costs 90000 to a hundred. Let's just say a hundred. Keep it easy. I know some people are like, oh. okay, let's say 1% of your budget is gonna to go to a consultant to guide you on the right path. I spent $50,000 over. I'm telling you right now, I'd spend $1,000 in a heartbeat to avoid spending 50. <laughs> because it's just, you know, we don't wanna, we don't know what we don't know. And that's the biggest danger is that we definitely have the questions we have. But I often, when I work with people, ask them questions that they didn't know to ask, okay? And it's just because I've been doing this and I've been doing it at a level of like bopping around the country, living under the radar, illegal, you name it. I mean, I was shocked to hear that my friend Aria called up a bunch of RV parks and said, yeah, come on in with your tiny home. We got kicked out of three, you know, and we're, we got to turn the minds of one RV park. That'll be another part of the Go Tiny Academy. If you get a no, it does not mean no for sure. So we'll teach you on that. So my time is up. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for being here. There's another amazing presenter happening right now. Let me go and peek at who that is. We got non-toxic tiny home, home building with Ben Garrett. Oh my God, you guys, for anyone that wants to live in a home built well without EMFs and you know mold or any of that stuff, go learn from Ben. Okay, go tiny. Go, 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 go. Love you guys.